So I'm Jenny Evans. I'm a professor in the Department of Meteorology and Atmospheric Sciences. I'm also a faculty associate at EASY in EMS and I direct Penn State's Institute for Computational and Data Sciences. I'm also a hurricane researcher. Hurricanes occur all around the globe. This just gives you a hint. Anywhere that's red are the most intense hurricanes. Anywhere that's up to pale blue is where hurricanes form and, and develop. And you can see my homeland of Australia is all, almost covered with them. You can see everyone's familiar with the hurricanes hitting the US. And you can look and see up in the top right of this image, hurricanes even getting all the way to Scandinavia and the UK and Western Europe. So they're the kinds of hurricanes that really fascinate me. So I got really fascinated first by hurricanes when I was a little girl. So in Australia, tropical cyclone Tracy came ashore and hit Darwin in December 1974. For a little girl growing up, it was a rather significant day. And um, you can see the devastation that Tracy wrought there. The thing with Tracy is if you look at the picture on the right, the, the map of the US, that massive circle is super typhoon tip that occurred in the Pacific in 1979, the largest storm we knew at that time. If you can see, there's a tiny little dot in uh, just to the east of Texas. That's the size of tropical cyclone Tracy, a tiny little storm that took out half of one of Australia's major cities. So that's how I got involved in hurricanes. Another thing that really caused me to uh, get concerned about hurricanes and to feel that by doing research on hurricanes I could make a difference was thinking about the impacts they have on society. So what you see here are animations of on the right hand side what happens when a hurricane's coming ashore and the ocean um, is responding to the very strong winds as that storm moves ashore. On the left you can see what happens in terms of wind damage. And along the bottom, those little bars are showing you if a storm is more and more intense, how the change, what changes about the effect of the waves and of the wind. And so, of course, you see as the storm increases in intensity, things become worse and worse. The winds, you start to see the roof peel off from the corner of the house and eventually Trees lose all their leaves, they're blown down, and, and you may not have a house at the end of a Category 5 storm coming by. If you're close to the coast, you run the risk of storm surge overwhelming your house. So this is why, if you're told to evacuate, please evacuate. We can't help you if you stay there and something like this happens. And meteorologists are all about keeping people safe. Sure, we help you to decide when to take your umbrella or whether to take your sweater or wear a t-shirt, but getting you out of the way of a tropical cyclone, helping you understand when a blizzard's going to be really bad or even icing on the road. These are all things that we try and do to help keep you safe. And you can see here the impacts of hurricanes in the US. That picture is one that one of our Penn State freshmen took after Hurricane Sandy in 2012 and that's in New Jersey. And you can see on the right these two graphs. The top right one with the blue lines shows the number of deaths in the US attributed to hurricanes. You can see it starts in the beginning of the 20th century and goes to early 2000s. And you can see really terrible events in the first half of that record and just one terrible event near the end, which of course is Hurricane Katrina. So the keeping people safe bit is working with that one terrible exception. Down below in the green, you can see the cost, the damage, the dollars. And you can see as we become more and more wealthy that the green is getting much larger. So we're losing much more stuff. We can't get the stuff out of the way. We can get the people out of the way. So we still feel like we're succeeding. So that's just a little bit to let you know why I like to work on hurricanes and why it's important.
So the type of hurricanes that have really interested me over the last couple of decades are hurricanes that start deep in the tropics usually and ultimately move, in our case, up the east coast of the US and then they maybe also hit Canada, they go over to Europe and, and Western Europe, the UK or even Scandinavia can be impacted by these storms. Hurricane Sandy was a storm like that and that's a storm that I've spent a lot of time with my, my research group, my grad students uh, looking into and I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the things we've found today. So this is a picture of Sandy going up the east coast starting south of Cuba and uh, if you look at it you see that the storm changed its shape looking here at the satellite uh, signature of the storm so what you see if you're looking at satellite on the news and it changes a lot. Now as it changes it becomes harder to forecast and it, these storms are moving into areas where people aren't used to hurricanes and to dealing with them so we really have to make sure we can give good guidance. Now we use computer forecast models every day all the time for everything from you know what's the top temperature going to be today to how do we think about climate change. The thing with these computer models is they're not really good at uh, producing information about clouds and hurricanes are just made up of a whole lot of thunderstorms and those thunderstorms are the source of the energy that makes the winds as strong as they are. So knowing in detail about the clouds is tricky and we also don't have perfect information on the storm at any time. The data are not perfect when we look at them. So we have uncertainty in our forecasts. So it's no good just making one forecast and saying, there I am, I can go home, time to go have a cup of tea with my mum. Uh, this is again showing you how those storms change and why it's such a big deal that we get the change right. So when you're looking at it, the strong winds spread out so much more and the strong winds are the red and the green and you can see the area of green getting so much bigger even though there's less red. So very strong winds over a much larger area as those storms move out of the tropics and move into higher latitudes. So one way to think about these storms and to think about how to improve the forecast is to look at lots and lots and lots of forecasts of the same storm starting at the same time and to say what are the, all of the possible futures that this storm might end up, um, end up behaving like. And so here you see about 120 forecasts of Hurricane Sandy starting right, below, right south of Cuba. And so according to the computer model, it could have come ashore as far south as the Carolinas, or it could have come ashore in the far northern Canada or gone out to sea and never come ashore. And so that's a lot of uncertainty. So what my group have done is used machine learning, which is a special kind of statistical modeling really, to say we have all this information about all these forecasts how do we separate it out? Because really it boils down to just relatively few um, different ways the storm interacts with other weather systems. And so what we do is with our machine learning, we find ways to objectively, so have a computer algorithm that we don't tell in detail what to do, we just tell it the approach to take, and that's the machine learning approach to separate those 120 forecasts out into five separate groups. And so you can see the color coding here of those five separate groups. And one way we decide whether or not the, the individual group does a better job of the forecast is looking at what really happened, right? And so what I've got here on the right hand side is what the radar looked like when Sandy made landfall, when it came ashore in New Jersey. On the left is the best of those groups of, of forecasts and this was the blue ones. And you can see that the pattern of the radar from that, uh, that set of forecasts when you average them together looks a lot like what actually happened. And as I said, clouds are hard to do in a computer model. 
So this is a really tough test. It's not the only test we use, but it's an easy one just to give a summary of what we're looking at. So that's a bit about my research, and I think it's incredibly important for improving the forecast. And, you know, as I like to say, one of the things meteorologists do is help to keep people safe.